Radiant Church presents Radiant Stories, a collection of stories that showcase God's faithfulness to take our hopeless situations and craft them into beautiful testimonies of His power, provision, and love. We're here today with Lane and Mindy Gordon. Can you guys tell us a little bit about, we we definitely want to talk specifically about uh, your adoption journey and your adoption story, but um, just give us a little background on you two as a couple and start of your family and that type of thing. We've been married 18 years. We have three kids. Uh, our oldest, Lily, uh, will be 15 in November, and then we've got our middle son, Wills, who's 11, and our adopted son, uh, Zeke, who is five. And uh, I'm a school teacher, and then do lots of other side things for purposes of money and creative outlets because you got to be creative yep. sometimes in your school teacher. Mindy's a, has her teaching degree, but stay at home mom and, and uh, is awesome at just running a home. It's, it's, I've learned it's a legitimate art form and she's really good at it. So I like that. <laughs> Thanks. Anything else? Sweetie, what do you, I can bench 150 pounds. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I actually don't know what I can bench. <laughs> no. Yeah. So we, um, I think just early dating years, we kind of talked a lot about like originally kind of wanting a big family. It just, you know, when you're when you're dating and you're talking about all those ideals and um, thinking about all the ways that you envision your life. And so I mm. think the way that things turned out is certainly not how we envisioned it. Mm. But God's plan is always like better. And it wasn't always easy to you know, get to the places that he's really sanctified us through, but. Or maybe you could say his way of <laughs> fixing our stupid mistakes to get yeah. us to really good yeah. places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Lord. I know probably the the things that you guys went through in the adoption process was probably a lot to do. I know, you know, marriage mm-hmm. is a whole other can of, can of beans mm-hmm. just in and of itself. But tell us kind of, was there a moment when you guys, I know you, you Mindy, you talked about, you know, when you were dating, you both kind of had a heart for a big family. Was that specifically for, was adoption on your guys' hearts before, you know, you even got married? The idea seemed awesome, just like the idea of marriage seems awesome. And and then when you, when you got some skin in the game, you start figuring it out like, oh man, this is, this is hard. And what does it mean? What does it mean to say yes? And then to be faithful through that yes. What was one of the first moments that you guys realized after saying yes, where you were like, oh, (laughs) I have to say yes again to this because I (laughs) I really don't maybe want to so much. The the very first phone call with the agency after we decided to say yes. So it was literally (laughs) like that early on where, um, I mean, so it it had been for Mindy something that God had, had started to stir in her heart first. So what does that look like? Because of course, you know, the, the, the word adoption has multiple subcategories. So do we want to do domestic? Do we want to do international? Do we want to do foster care? Foster adoption, care? Do we want to do care, international, yeah. but closer to us? Or do we want to do international on the other side of the world? I mean, there's just a ton of those conversations to have. And I don't know if we knew all of those answers yet necessarily, uh, but in starting conversations with our, we kind of looked through several different possible agencies, and this sounds so terrible, but we ended up going with the agency that had the least expensive adoption contract fee, the application fee. We're like, oh, this one's only $300. I'll do that some one. some contract fees that were like $800, <laughs> yeah. and we're like, yeah. I mean. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll Lord, do that one because it's only we're just going to do the cheapest one. We're yeah. just going to ask um, you to but, <laughs> Yes, but in his, you know, wonderful wonderful sovereignty led us to a really great agency. But that first phone call, literally like, Hmm, I think we, I think we need to call you back. Like she's asking us questions about things. And we were like, Oh, that sounds harder than what we thought it was going to be. And that, and she sent me, I remember she's like, now Lane, I just, I emailed you over, um, a fee schedule. So you can kind of see when certain things are going to need to come due. And, and I, I just like literally, you know, my heart just like sinking. And I'm like, yeah. I think we need to call you back. I think we need to like <laughs> talk through some there things. There was literally and- like $10,000 that was due within 12 weeks. Yeah. And I oh, remember wow. looking at him <laughs> and he was it's like, a lot of weddings. white as a ghost. <laughs> and he's just like, okay, mm-hmm. 
Okay. Yep. Well, you know, we're just going to call you back. We got to talk about some stuff. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, if this doesn't get past <laughs> at this point, like... Um, yeah, it was a money thing. It was, I, I think at that point we had tossed around a couple different countries as options. I think at that point we kind of had felt the call to, to move internationally as opposed to domestically with the adoption. Some questions about just different countries that were available and some that were closed. Uh, we really felt this call to the country of Haiti um, for, for practical reasons. And then again, just for kind of reasons that maybe we couldn't quite put our finger on. I think some of that was just the, the prompting of the, of the Holy prayer, Spirit just lots and of prayer. prayer. I think yeah. it was a lot of it was just like offering up to God sort of our ideas, you yeah. know, like, Lord, is it here? Is it foster care? Is it like, cause I think with adoption, like, I mean, the need is so great. So wherever you choose to adopt from, wherever the yeah. Lord is leading you, there are purposes mm-hmm. in every country and every place and every area. And so what does that look like for us? That waiting period, that sort of like those big question marks that you kept running into, can you talk a little bit about maybe some of the specific ways that you prayed or were Mm -hmm. encouraged or supported during that waiting process? Because I know it was pretty significant. It was a pretty significant amount of time. The waiting was brutal. I mean, once we finally, you know, really had prayed about it, we really felt from the Lord like this is the direction that we need to head. And I felt God, even from the very beginning, that he had already chosen this child. Mm-hmm. He'd already, he already knew the whole plan. And so whatever this plan was, I knew that there was a plan for this child that was, that we were adopting. Like I was, I've always really felt that very strongly. And so knowing that there was this you know, child. And I had actually had a dream or vision actually one night about I was holding a little boy's hand and the boy's hand was, was black. And so that was part of the reason why I was just like, well, I think we're, we're going to adopt a black child. So wherever that country, you know, is, or, or city or state, whatever. Um, and so that really stuck with me. And that was really a gift from the Lord to really give a lot of strength in the years to come. To sustain the um, waiting period. That it wasn't <laughs> just me. There were many times where I felt like maybe I was making up all of this. Maybe it was all in my head. Maybe I was crazy because it, the waiting period of, you know, f- it was four years from the time we said yes to the time wow. we brought him home. I, I started to question whether that, you know, that was Satan or whatever, just so many attacks of my faith and so many doubts and so many things like, I'm just crazy. I'm just making this up. God never said this is what we should be doing. And, you know, but a lot of that vision kept coming back to me. It was like this promise of the Lord, like the son I have for you is, is here and he is waiting mm-hmm. and there's a purpose for his life. And, and I had no idea if we were even going to adopt a boy, like I had <laughs> no idea. But to answer your question about the, the waiting period, we, after we had signed the, all the documents and all of that stuff, we were really just in this really great place. God was showing up constantly. He just kept showing up in these amazing, Mm -hmm. amazing ways. And then after really, he was showing up really that first year, it felt like after that, for the next three years, there was just like silence and nothing. And this was what I would call like my days of like total barrenness where I just struggled. I struggled to Mm -hmm. believe if it was ever going to happen I struggled just in my faith. I struggled with, oh, just so much fear. And um, Satan was really working hard to destroy a lot of sort of that original, you know, excitement and God's, you know, when you're, Mm -hmm. when you're sort of on top of the mountain, it's so great to just be like, yes, God's so amazing. He's so near. Yeah. I feel him so close. And then it was like, where did he go? And that's, the Psalms were such a great comfort to me because, because they so reflected my heart, yeah. you know, about losing your hope and why are you downcast? And, you know, and, and then to constantly say, like, to put your faith in him, to put your, your hope in him. Those were tough, tough days for me. I found myself in a very dark place, not not of like a depression, but of just a silence. Mm-hmm. It was really tough, really tough. 
But you can go ahead and share like the (laughs) amazing ways that God did show up, especially in that first year. Well, yeah, I mean, again, the the process of of Haiti isn't a quick one. It took us a year to get all of the paperwork around. Oh, my goodness. And it was, I mean, it was was like a checklist that any type A person would have, they would have lost their mind over. I mean, it was, yeah, (laughs) mountains of paperwork to get all that around. And then again, the trick with Haiti is that you kind of submit it and then you just wait. Um, Mm -hmm. So that waiting, you wait and then it expires. So then you yeah, have to do it over. Yeah, so yeah. I did oh it three times, yeah. you guys. You had to re up the paperwork times three times. I did all this paperwork. Oh my word! To do it. Um, uh, yeah, and it does. I mean, it tests your faith. The the waiting again in anything uh, is is just always the challenge. Like it is, it is super easy to have faith in the Lord when when He is showing up in those wonderful ways. And then there's there's like those testing periods, and mm-hmm. I, I think. You know, when you're outside of a testing period, you, you and you could look back on it. Maybe I should say it's you're oftentimes reminded of his faithfulness, even in those periods. But when you're in them, it's just hard. Um, mm-hmm. There's just no right answers at times, and there's no yeah, there's no solution to the frustration of of the question why because you're constantly asking why. Why is it taking so long? Why haven't we heard anything? Why don't we know? Why don't why doesn't someone do something? Why do I have to redo yeah. this paperwork again? So lots of those whys were, um, were tough. Those were tough. Those were tough days. The financial side is always a scary one. That was one of the first, probably one of the first places that God really just kind of showed us that our yes was, it was where we needed to be. Mm-hmm. For me, I was just like, oh, the Lord's totally going to provide. I just knew it. I was like, he's going to provide. But for Elaine, he was like, "Um, (laughs) we're in trouble. (laughs) And so it was really the Lord's generosity to you. Of course it was. For you to put your faith in him. Well, and I, so when you, you know, when you look at the, when you look at the total amount, um, and again, they can never give you exact figures, but, but when you look at that, the total amount on that fee schedule, I mean, it was, roughly a $40,000 bill. And I was like, babe, I just, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do that. Mm-hmm. And he showed up in a really cool way at first, just sort of in a, in, in some small ways. So we, we wrote up the blog post. We kind of put it out there for people to read and just, again, like be a part of, you know, Hey, if, if you'd like to donate, here's uh you know, here's our PayPal address and here's the ways that, that you can help. And I remember that being a really cool experience because it like officially was public and literally within like 10 minutes, just starting to get little email notifications, right? So-and-so donated $10, so-and-so donated $25. And they're putting in little notes of like, hey, I I had you as a teacher your first uh, year in oh, high wow. school, and I just love you and would love to just, I don't have much, but let me let me do this. And so I, it was it was mm-hmm. such an honor to start to see people from our past and people from our, from mm-hmm. our current, you know, life just kind of showing up in, in small ways. And so I remember that felt really good. But I remember that we only raised like $2,000 and I was like, oh crap, like that's not even (laughs) remotely close to being enough. And, uh, and, uh, I think the day that will always just stand out on our memory. So we had a, we had a snow day from school and I got an email from someone that said, Hey, uh, I heard about your adoption and I have, um, I've got this idea and I just would love for you to like. I'd love for you to shoot me an email or or give me a call. So I told Mindy at that point. Uh, I called this this particular person up, and I remember um, I remember when she answered. She just you could tell she'd been crying. Mm. Um, you know, and I was like, "Hey, what's going on?" And she said, "Well, um, she said I've got this idea," and and then she kept apologizing. I I'll never forget that. She's like, "I'm I'm just I'm really sorry." I was like, "Okay, what like?" What, what's wrong? And she's like, well, I, I just, I don't really know how to say this to you, but it's just, um, gosh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. And I'm like, what do you like? It's okay. Like what's wrong? What do you, what's your idea? And she said, well, I've been sharing with my husband about, um, about you guys saying yes to adoption. And, um, she's like, I just, I don't really know how to like, I don't know how to tell you this. I'm like, okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get nervous, right? I'm like, I, like, yeah. what's wrong? Did I, <laughs> have I upset her? Have I, like, it was just this weird, I didn't know how to like put two and two together. 
quick little backstory. This gal and her husband had a really freak accident, mm-hmm. um, probably three years before this time. And so she said to me, she's like, I don't, I just don't even know how to like say this. Um, but she said, we, we have this settlement that we got from the accident. She said, and we have this money. And um, she said, we don't know what to do with it. We're not going to buy a house. We're not going to go on vacation. She's like, I've got this money. We have this money and we just don't know what to do with it. And then, and then we heard about your adoption and it was like, I just had this answer of what I was supposed to do. Um, and she said, so I don't, I don't know if this makes any sense, but we feel like we need to like just fund your entire adoption. She's like, we just, we just feel like we need to take care of it. Wow. And I, I, it was just one of those moments that you, it's like the world slows down around you, right? And you just, yeah. I, and so I remember saying like, oh, I was like, I don't, okay, I don't know how to, like, I'm not sure I even know what to say right now. And she said, well, it's okay. Like, talk to Mindy, make sure that she's okay with it. I think she'll be okay with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, she said, I, I just, just call us back, right? And, and I, it, yeah, you just, you hang up the phone in those moments. And again, it's like, it's like the, the world is just in slow motion, around you. And Mindy, of course, because I'm just on the phone. And so she's like, what? what? I was like, oh my gosh, what <laughs> what's is wrong? wrong? Yeah, like, what's wrong? Because she's seen wrong. my face and yeah. it's like, Mack truck just hit yeah. me. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. And and so I did. I hung up the phone and, and started kind of talking through all of it with her. We, of course, called them back and were just like, I, I don't even know how to thank you mm-hmm. enough for that. But of course, we'll say yes to that. And so that for us was one of the first big places that God said, there's going to be difficult times, mm-hmm. but I'm going to, I'm going to maybe just take this one off the table, right? Yeah. Like this is not going to stand in the way of your yeses because, and I, I thought about this. I just wonder if the struggle of four years, if the financial burden would have been added to that, I just wonder if we would have quit. Honestly, yeah. I just wonder if at some point we would have been like, mm-hmm. I can't keep doing this. I can't, you know, we're trying to meet these different fee schedules and, and we're, we're literally getting nothing in, 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 from the government in return. We're getting no like, hey, we're thinking we've got a referral coming in six months. Hey, it was just nothing. Yeah. And so I just wonder sometimes if, again, in his goodness, he knew that tough times would come, but maybe that was just one that he was just going to. Mm-hmm. He was just going to yeah. take off. Well, the it table. also kept us really accountable too. And it kept us and very it accountable. Kept us really from quitting a lot of times. Like, yeah, like knowing that this gift was given to us so freely and so generously, and just it was so humbling. And they were just just such precious people. I just kept thinking, like, no, we we owe it to them. Yeah. <laughs> To bring this baby <laughs> home, man. We owe it to them. That'd be a really uncomfortable phone call. <laughs> hey, we're out. And by the way, the money you gave us, all gone. <laughs> yeah, so it did. It really kept us yeah. um, committed. Kept you in the fight. Yeah. 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 What was the first time you guys met Zeke? What was that like? Can you talk about that a little bit? It was the other time that the world slowed down around us. So in Haiti, the way they do it is you um, you wait and you wait and you wait for a referral. Mm -hmm. Haiti does all the matching. We have zero control over any of that. And so that's, again, like... Here's our parameters. We were very mm-hmm. open with our parameters. With yeah, ages, you give an age range, needs, you give genders. It's like didn't matter. And so I kind of had thought early on, maybe I'll narrow those down to make sure that you know, like I'm gonna help God out here a little <laughs> bit. I'll just like let's say boy, <laughs> let's say this age. But I'm I had like, this vision, but I'm gonna make sure yeah, it comes I'm true. Like, I really felt Bye. God being like, Mm-mm, no, huh. this is gonna be me. It's gotta be all me. Yeah. Keep those parameters open, which we did. So we just, we kind of just put it all out there, very general, open parameters. And so that meant we got a mat. We would get a match for any of, you know, really. For the next child that was eligible, when we Mm -hmm. got, when we got next in line for a child that met our parameters, that's where the match would be made. And so we were, we had been waiting for two years at that point for a match. It was still just really kind of no idea necessarily when that would come. We hoped it would be soon. The not knowing, the living in limbo was really, really hard. Yeah. You, it's really hard to make plans. It's really hard to know. Yeah. 
how to plan your life around that. But um, I was coming back from a friend's house and I saw that Kate had called from our agency. And of course, whenever she, her name comes up on my phone, I'm like Sorry, having a mild go. heart yeah. attack. <laughs> Wherever and you are. I had the kids in the car with me and Lane was still at school during the school day. And I, um, I called and of course, up to this point, like I felt like she was basically a sister because we had talked so much on the phone yeah. and whatever. And so she's like, Mindy? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> she's like, guess what? We have a match. And so we were just like, I put her on speaker and let the kids hear. And she told us the name of our son, which in, in Haiti, his name was Jolinsky. And so I had known who he was just from pictures and stuff because we yeah. kind of know all the kids who are at the, the orphanage. Kids at the sure. orphanage yeah. and stuff. And so that was just one of those moments where we were just so excited and I was just, yeah, finally we were getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. It was like at the end of two years really of just nothing that finally we were going to Haiti to meet our son. And really up when you are matched, it's like, I mean, it is a whirlwind. It, there's so much paperwork to get around. Yeah, there's there another is, set of paperwork. You got to get <laughs> flights. You got to get, you know, and so the government... Um, requires that you're there for two weeks for a socialization visit or like a bonding trip um, where we're observed by the social services in Haiti. And then there's just different requirements that you have to meet when you're down there. And so we were, we thought that we were ready for that, but I don't know if you could ever really prepare. Two weeks is a really long time to be away from our biological kids. It's two weeks is a really long time to be in a foreign country where like, I mean, we were so bored out of our minds. We we were like inventing things to do during the day. But anyway, well, because we the, the idea is you're there for two weeks. And so literally like you, you get off the airplane, you're picked up at the airport by the people that run the orphanage. We were taken to the place that we were going to stay. And that was like, and it was late enough in the evening that they wanted to wait till the next morning. But literally that next morning, it's, they drive you to the orphanage, you meet this child. And then the next two weeks is like, okay, play family. Yeah. Like, Figure, yeah, you know, so, have it at, have yeah, at it. So and, narrowing <laughs> down, down on that time that, you know, of course, I'm just a mess. I'm just a co just a wreck because well, cause it's real so at that point. Anxious. Like, oh, it's officially it's real. It's not just this here's idea. A child and here's an airplane ticket. It's real. And it's I'm having to deal. leave yeah. my other two kids for two whole weeks. That that just required a lot of prayer. Mm -hmm. Just was in constant prayer, even just on the airplane and landing and then and then getting there and so the next day um when we finally got there we were we were ready to meet him and of course um I think a lot of times again like when you have this idea you think what this moment's gonna yeah. be like you know it's gonna be <laughs> slow-mo well you've seen like videos of yeah. families Music. running Absolutely. up the sidewalk to yeah. each other and he's and gonna put his arms around me and say mommy I, I love you like it's just so <laughs> not how it happens it's uh, it's suddenly we're walking into an orphanage and it's loud and it's so hot. And he was sitting on a chair. And he was so little. And yeah. he had this little torn up backpack on. And he was just he was just sitting there and he was all he was all ready for the day. Like they they dressed him up for yeah. the day. And so I just look over and no one's there to greet us. No one's there just like I'm looking around and I know who he is, obviously, from pictures and stuff. And I'm looking around and I, I point to him and I ask one of the nannies. I was like, Jelinski. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's over. He's over there. He's over there somewhere. <laughs> and so I just knelt down by him and I, and I was just like, hi. And we, we don't speak the same language. We, he has yeah. no idea who we are. Yeah. He was just told to sit in the chair. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and so I just knelt down and I brought like a little teddy bear from him and he just would not make eye contact. Mm. He yeah. wouldn't look at us. Um, which is not uncommon from what we heard with other friends. Certainly that not had uncommon. Adopted, yeah. Um, yeah. From, from not just uncommon for the orphanage, I think just kind of a, for a child that's experienced trauma, um, the, you know, the, the trauma of abandonment and all that for them, for them to light up like that to a stranger is probably not going to happen. Yeah. So, so we were prepared this, for that. This very, yeah, stone faced stone kind of faced. looking through us sort of thing. And of course we're like, Hey buddy, <laughs> hey, here's a ball. After about a minute, I'm like. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, you know it's what just I mean? weird like, and awkward and oh like. Oh my goodness, he's he's mine. He is my child, and I'm like, and he is an absolute stranger, and so are we. Yeah. We're like his parents now, and 
he's and we're strangers to him. Mm-hmm. So how do we navigate this properly? So it was tough. Yeah. It was, those were a tough two weeks. And then, I mean, as if the, the two weeks aren't hard, yeah. at the end of the two weeks, it's, okay, and now you need to say goodbye. Mm-hmm. And he's going to stay here. And you're going to go home. And you're going to enter phase 374 of waiting. Like now there's new paperwork that has to all get pushed through the system. Now that we've officially accepted that referral, um, now you have to go finish home, the adoption finish process. the adoption process by doing the next now, mountain yeah, of paperwork. And, and a little bit about that time for me too, just again, spiritually, just, I think I felt that pressure to just feel like I was his mom and to feel yeah immediate love for him like he was my child and the fact is is that I didn't it was I mean I thought he was adorable that he was so cute I I thought he was the greatest but at the same time I was like I don't feel the same way for him that I do mm. my biological children and I knew that going into it but then when I was faced with it I it was like am I enough for him like there were a couple instances where mm. I just knew that there were some sort of orphan responses to things that he would do and I was like, oh, my goodness, like, this is not God. You picked the wrong girl. I am not an, I'm not a good enough mom mm-hmm. for this. I am not enough for him. And I was texting some of my adoption friends that have, had really walked closely along with us in this journey. who we were also adopting from the same orphanage. Um, I was just very thankful for them having kind of gone through that already, too, and just being like, oh, yes, no, you're not yeah. enough. You're not None of us are. We're yeah. not enough for these kids, but that's why we have Jesus because He's enough, and He will give you what you need yeah. every single day to get through mm-hmm. all of it. And just, um, and just that immense guilt that I would feel like when He would get on my nerves because the fact is He's a two and a half year old who's like kind of bouncing off the walls at some <laughs> some points of the day, and there were nights where I was like. I can't wait for him to go back. Yeah. Like I was struggling. She had a hard couple of days. I was like, why? Oh my goodness. He, I can't wait for him to go back. Like he's, he's literally driving me nuts. And I would go shut myself in the room and just sob mm. because again, like you wait so long. And, and I think those ideas and those visions and those ideals that you have about, about adopting and bringing a child into your family, like you want to feel that love. Yeah. And when it's not there, it's, um, Especially as a mom, Lane just wasn't sweating it. But as I think as a mo- as a mom, I was just like, I need to, I need to feel something, yeah. you know. Um, I can't do this without without mm-hmm. love, and so just praying like God, I don't have the love, human love. I don't have it. It's not in my capacity. And so I'm. I was just begging God like, give me your love that you have for him. I need you to give me eyes to see him as you see him. And so that was that I just kept praying that every single day, just God, give me, you've got to give me your love because I don't have it. It's, it's not, it's not in me. And so we were actually walking back from the orphanage one night, really close to, I think it was maybe the day before we left. He wanted to show us like his room and stuff. And so I was carrying him around and he was showing us like where he slept and he slept in this little pack and play that was like all the way to the back of the to the wall and it was in a room with a bunch of other pack and plays and and he showed me his bed and I was looking at it and I was thinking like he God just showed up so mightily in this moment just like this is this is where he has slept for the last you know two years with no mommy to tuck him in to kiss him goodnight to pray with him and like this is and and he just um He's just this child. Like, I just suddenly, God just start, started showing me the way that he sees him mm-hmm. and the way that God would comfort him at night and, and that God would comfort him during the day. And, like, and that's, and that's why I'm, I'm here. I'm now here to, like, fill in these gaps for this little boy who needs a mommy and he needs a daddy. And um, after we walked home that night, it literally, I broke down. I had many breakdowns during this adoption process. This was <laughs> one of them. I just broke down and sobbed and just cried and cried and cried um, and just thanked God over and over for like for giving me that glimpse of the way that he sees Jolinski 
And um, that was just, that was a real turning point for me too, because I was able to go home to leave him in Haiti, which was so hard. Um, It was so hard to walk away from him and to go and then not know when we were going to see him again, not know when the adoption was going to be complete, not know if we were going to be able to make it back, you know, on a visit to see him um, in between uh, finishing the adoption process. And so that was really, really hard for me. But at the same time, I felt so much relief because I felt like God was just like, I'm going to give you exactly what you need to raise him as your own. And and, um, God has just been very gracious in that just giving me like when I've been at the end of myself and trying to do it on my own and I finally get to the end and he's like, all right, let me, let me show you the way that I see things and let me give you the things that, that you need in order to, to be what you need for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a really sweet, kind, tender father kind of realization. After you guys had to leave him after the two weeks, there was two more years of waiting. Year and a half. Year and a half. Uh, of I think waiting. roughly, just mm-hmm. a little under a year and a half. So we we got back in. Uh, it, it was April. In April, yeah. It was when we went to visit him, and so it was. It was that next July, July that we finally brought him mm-hmm. home. So a year mm-hmm. and three months, mm-hmm. roughly. Did um, you but, guys take take your? your older two kids with you? Mm -hmm. We did when we went Mm -hmm. to pick him up. We did not. The bonding trip, that's an option, but it's discouraged for obvious reasons. Like, and I get it now, like it would have been really easy to just distract him with the kids and not have to enter into the difficulty of getting to know him. Uh, But, but we didn't, and I'm glad that we didn't, but Mm -hmm. we did bring them back with us, desperately wanting them to just really know where their brother came from and what part of his story was that they just can't even fathom. And I think it was, um, it was probably one of the greatest gifts that we could have yeah. given mm-hmm. them at times, you know, they'll be frustrated and, and it's hard for them. I mean, we had, I don't know, the four of us had kind of a sweet gig going, you know what I mean? Like it was, yeah. it, it was worked, easy. it was easy. Yeah. Um, it's weird. I, I, I sometimes don't, you know, take into account that for them, uh, especially I think for Wills as our youngest and, the, and up, up to that point, the baby of the family, that he became an older brother to a four-year-old, like suddenly, sudden, literally yeah. suddenly, like pulled up in a car, walked into an orphanage, <laughs> gave his new brother a hug. And now you're older and the middle child and he's four and you have no connection with him whatsoever. And so that has been, uh, was hard for them and, and has continued to be hard. But I think having them come with us really uh, was, mm-hmm. was just very important for them to, to see that. And I think, if anything, just our desire is always for our kids to have their eyes open to the brokenness in the world uh, and, and that God might woo them to obedience at times through just their eyes being opened to the massive need that exists um, in the world outside of them. And so that that to us was a, an important thing if we could make happen. Mm-hmm. And so I'm really glad we did. That's so awesome. That is, I mean, all of that is such a great a, a great and long testimony. I mean, it was a, it's, it was a huge journey. Yeah, it's not a guys, short story. Sorry. No, no, it's not, it's no. I, I, I love it. Down. <laughs> um, so you guys have you've had Zeke now for a little over a year. Yep. yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the hindsight that you have, what what's the biggest mm. lesson or mm-hmm. takeaway that you've you have individually yeah. as a family? Yeah. How have you kind of shifted and molded to welcome in this this new promise Mm -hmm. that the lord gave you guys and that's so true i mean the promise if that was one thing i kept coming back to like that that god has made promises and that he is faithful in them even though there are times that we don't see how he's working or we don't feel him near you know like i think that was so hard for me like why don't i feel him near Mm -hmm. um but knowing that he is near and knowing that his promises will come true and knowing that 
our journey in obedience is going to come into fruition with having him home. There were days where I just didn't believe that that was ever going to happen. And having him home, I mean, I'm not going to lie that this last year has not been super easy. He's a he's an amazing kid. He is amazing. But, but he's that, five. But he's, he's four and a half and five. He's five. Um, he has no framework for being in a family. Yeah. So, um, or mom, dad, brothers, sisters, how does that work? And n- not knowing the language, throw in some health problems, throw in some, you know, there's all of those factors that have just been have been difficult. And then not to, not to mention just that huge transition as a family and transition for our biological kids too. And where do they fit in this now? Um, it was really hard for me, both of us at night, we would get him in bed and we would all sit on the couch and the kids were like, this is, this is forever. Like, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is, it's never going to be the same again. And then to hear them verbalize, like, Um, I miss it when it was just the four of us, you know, that's really hard to hear because all of our attention was going to him, to him. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's, how do I manage that as a mom? How do I, but again, just it's, it was a constant reminder for them too, just for us to say in obedience, like God, God does ask us, ask us to do things that are really hard. And they're really scary and it's going to require sacrifice. And I know that this yes wasn't your yes, yeah. but but you're seeing what yes looks like. And I know that that's had an effect on you, but this is the life that, that God asks of all of, the, of all of us. I don't know what your yes is going to be when you're grown up or when you're a little bit older, but it's going to be something and it's, and it's going to require a lot of you. And so it's just, and they matured so much in this last year. I mean, it has not been easy. Yeah. There have been a lot of tears and a lot of trying to make, I'm trying to, you know, cover all bases with all three of them. And I felt like there wasn't enough of me to go around. But um, but God's just been so faithful in just eliminating those fears for me um, to always remind me that, number one, God has a plan for Zeke, whatever that is. That kid is so unique and so special and he is just something else I'm telling like so God has a plan for and so if we get to play if we get to be in part of that plan like I'm in I can't wait to see what God um does in his life so that this just God is so faithful but then he's also he's just faithful to all of us and you know he is his promises are true and he doesn't leave us and so even looking back like I am so thankful for that time of of all that fear and that anxiety and all that waiting, man, that just shaped me and it really molded me into, into what God desired me to be. And that did not come without pain and tears and angst and yeah. all of that well, stuff. But <clears throat> he showed up every single time. Yeah. And I would say, of need. I would say hindsight, hindsight for me is just reflecting on the timeline and the way in which you know, if I was writing the book, it would have happened this way yeah. in really understanding the things that God, I, I would say to Mindy at times during the wait. So I don't know this, babe, but I just wonder sometimes if God needs to keep doing a work in us in some places before mm-hmm. he finally brings mm-hmm. this yes to completion. Like m- maybe we're not ready for it yet. And maybe he yeah. hasn't said yes to it yet. Cause, because he's still got some things that he's working in for us. And so I think for me, the hindsight, you know, being on this side of it and looking back is a being thankful that it didn't happen in my time frame because that my whole life would be a disaster if I got what I wanted, right? Like what a mess, how, how <laughs> foolish of me to think like, I know what's best for me and the time in which it should happen. So I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm thankful for just what is our new normal now because it's a different type of normal, but it's a, but it's a fun new normal. And I think, I mean, Mindy and I will talk about this often, like, you know, we could have not said yes, but think about all that we would have missed Missed. out on. Mm -hmm. Um, Think about all the places that we've grown and that we've matured um, and, and how he had, he had brought us through different wildernesses separately, um, together in marriage and then, and then to unite us through this journey Mm -hmm. to just look back on all of that and really be able to say like, 
yeah, it, he he has been really good, and I'm just super thankful for the wilderness. It's 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 the place that we're reminded of our need of him and how we just can't do it on our own. And again, in practical ways, when you're waiting on a on a government to say yes, you have zero control over that. It's like I got nothing right now, yeah. so I'm just I'm resting on the promises. Yeah. Dude, man. Dude, man. <laughs> Dude, man. That is a powerful story, you guys. And I am, I am so thankful that I got to hear it in in its full mm-hmm. form, right from your lips yeah, for the first time ever. That's right. <laughs> it's really, really great. Um, I am very thankful for both of you as individuals and for being willing to yeah. do this with okay. us. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you for being on the podcast. This has been Lane and Mindy Gordon. Radiant Podcast. Radiant 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 Radio. (laughs) This has been Radiant Stories. Click subscribe to get a brand new story delivered to you every Monday.